Hey guys, we're gonna make some beaver lure here coming up and I just want to show you the process for making uh, processing my beaver caster that I use to make Birch River beaver lure. So this is a very effective lure and beaver caster is probably the most effective, one of the most effective, most attractive all around attractants for fur bears. So in the trapping industry, beaver caster is, is very heavily used. It's getting harder and harder to get because it, it's uh, in high demand, but the, because the pelt the fur prices are so low, there aren't a lot of people trapping beaver. And, but the caster demand is still high from, not only from people who make trapping lures, but people in the perfume industry and in the, the flavoring, food flavoring industry, there's a lot of demand for caster. And so it's, it's getting hard. I actually, uh, this stuff I caught, this is from beavers I caught in uh, this past spring. I got in here dried caster spring 2021 here on my northern main trap line. And I could have sold these for about $100 a pound, 90 or 100 a pound fully dried at the auction. Um, and then I probably, you know, you pay a little commission at the auction. And so it's not, not fully a hundred dollars a pound, but pretty close. So what I'm trying to say is it's getting pretty darn expensive to come by this caster. Um, so, which is why I had to raise the price of that lure just because it's, uh, the opportunity cost of selling caster elsewhere is really high. But anyway, I, I collected this caster from beavers when I trapped them and I dried it. Um, depending on the conditions, it can be just, uh, a few days to a few weeks uh, to get it dry and then I put it in the freezer and it's been in the freezer all summer and now what I'm doing is I'm thawing it out and I'm gonna run it through the the grinder to to get it ground and into a smaller consistency where I can work with it once I grind it then I'm, I'm gonna take that ground caster and I'm gonna put it uh, in the blender with some glycerin and a little bit of sodium benzoate uh, for uh, to improve the consistency and to preserve that caster so I can use it to make the lure. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of other ingredients uh, and make my Birch River Beaver Lure. So let's try it. Um, I apologize in advance for the loud noise you're gonna hear with this uh, grinder running. So hopefully you can uh, bear with me here. I'll just grind a few just so you can see what it's about. All right, sorry for that loud noise. Um, I had it on half power because I didn't want it to get too loud. And then I had to go full power because it takes a little bit to get through this, but um, as you can see, it's just turning this caster into kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of like the consistency of ground beef, I guess you, you could say. Um, I'm probably going to run it through a really uh, coarse grain uh, 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 plate on the grinder, and then I'm going to run it through a finer plate and uh, get it to the nice consistency of, of pretty finely ground beef. So then when we mix in uh, the other ingredients and blend it, it's going to have a consistent, uh, the, the distribution of odor and scent and, and everything else that's in that lure, it's going to be distributed consistently, um, throughout the entire uh, product. So anyway, that's just the first part of the process. All right. So um, hopefully you can see everything here. Uh, I had to take a little break because I had to let my the casters kind of the rest of the casters thaw out, and I got them thawed out, and then I ground the rest of them. Didn't you didn't need to listen to that loud noise and all that stuff? But um, anyway, I got probably about oh, um, forty to forty eight ounces of caster here, and it's ground up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it in the blender, the food processor, I guess we could call it. So this is kind of like, almost like ground beef, I guess. And 
and I'm really like I'm really trying <laughs> trying my hardest not to drop any of this because this stuff is so expensive. Um, I don't want to waste too much of it. So we're going to push it a little bit on this food processor for volume just because of the amount we have in this batch. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go get some glycerin and I'm gonna get some sodium benzoate and I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully it's not gonna be too loud, let's see. Use a lot of power, you can see my lights kind of flicker a little bit. Okay, so I'm noticing already I only had uh, eight ounces of glycerin. I, I figured I'd need 16, and it's a really thick, clumpy, pasty thing, and, and the you can tell the food processor is actually having trouble moving this stuff around. There's a lot of it, and um, so I'm going to add another eight ounces or close to it. So the glycerin is kind of a preservative. It's not really, uh, it is a, it will freeze proof this lure. It will help to freeze proof it. I have another ingredient I add later that, that will help even more. Uh, the sodium benzoate, I, I think really honestly caster, it, it itself is not going to be an issue in terms of uh, having to be preserved. But the outside of the shells, there's going to be maybe a little bit of meat, maybe a little bit of fat, tiny little bits that you have to worry maybe that maybe could rot, could promote bacteria growth or whatever. So that's why the sodium benzoate, but you really don't need much. Um, really, the caster I had, I cleaned them up myself. They're really nice and clean. I'm sure I would have been fine with just glycerin. All right, we can see that is a much better consistency for what I'm looking for. I do want to make sure that I, I spend plenty of time on grinding this down just to break up, break it up into small little parts and, and make sure everything's kind of blended and mixed in. So I'm going to do a little more, but I just want to show you a little bit. So that's a little chunkier than I want, but the consistency is right. The consistency I like. So um, I'm gonna, once I grind it up a little more, I might have to add a little bit of glycerin, but maybe just, just by breaking it up into smaller chunks, I'm gonna be able to achieve the smooth consistency uh, and, and uh, uh, exactly the type of uh, base that I need to produce this uh, beaver lure. So um, I think that's it guys. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move on to the next step. And honestly, I don't think it's a secret. I don't think there's any secrets in lure making, but uh, the business side of me realizes that everybody thinks this is all black magic. And if I share every formula with you, you won't want to buy it from me, apparently. So <laughs> a lot of people won't. I don't understand why. And so I'm going to hold off on showing you the rest of the process. I'm going to add a few ingredients. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do my thing. And I'll have a lure. Trappingtodaylures.com if you're interested in checking them out. If not, I hope you use this information to make your own lure out of your beaver caster. And I hope it helps you out. Beaver caster is really hard to beat in the trapping uh, business as far as lure. I don't think there's any other all-around animal attractor that can beat it. All right, guys, take care.